never be an issue again. Because your digital cameras, every one of them has a histogram. And for every photo, you ever seen it? Hopefully. You were probably pushing some buttons and it popped up like, what the heck? <laughs> that tells you that you've got the right exposure. Okay? All right, here's a, here's a box. This is dark, this is, this is black, and this is white. This, this is white, this line is black. Everything else are gradations of gray. All right, so if you take a picture and none of these touches either edge, you've basically got an acceptable exposure. And you, if you can't, you know, just look at the histogram. It, it's there. Now, this, this histogram is over here, but it's still not touching, so it's still acceptable, although it's a little bit darker than, but it's still acceptable. This one over here is a little bit lighter, but it's still acceptable because it's not... The left or right, not the top. Right? Left or right. Top and bottom simply means the highlights, the contrast, the highlights, okay? That's, that's less important than, because if, if, if this, let me show you, let me find a bad one. Okay. Okay, this histogram goes just like that, which means that over half of the image is dead black. No matter what you do to it, it's going to be dead black. There's no information in it for you to process. You've lost half your image. Nothing you can do about it. This one, here's a histogram. Half your image is pure white. There's nothing there. There's no information there for you to deal with. It's gone. It was never recorded. So if you see this or this, you got, oh, I, I need to do something. And then you need to know what you need to do to get the histogram over here. And most of our cameras are sophisticated enough that this is what we have to deal with, not this. If you're doing this, something's really screwy. Okay? Because the camera's meters are better than this. At least they should be. Okay. So here's the back of a point and shoot camera. And here's the back of the point and shoot camera with the histogram showing. Just leave it on, you know? Leave it on. Did you all the information? This was a perfectly exposed, this was a good picture of a board. It's perfectly exposed, right where it's supposed to be. It may not be sharp, but it's perfectly exposed. Because okay, remember, it's just physics. It's just pure physics. Okay. Now this is a camera, you know, I've never seen this camera before, and I kept punching buttons and this, she's like, oh, what's that? I've never seen that before. <laughs> Unfortunately, every digital camera does it a little bit differently, but you know, it's all in there. All right, here's an example. See all this stuff here? That's dead white. No matter what you do to this image, it's still going to be dead white. You can't fix it. Okay, but the information is simply not there. This one. Nothing is actually done. So this, I could take this image and turn it into this image in Photoshop because the information is all there, even though it's dark. And this is what it should look like. Okay? It's not, it can be subtle, but it's not subtle. If it's touching the histogram, it's gone. If it's near the histogram, you can bring it back. But you shouldn't really have to because you can fix it in a day and take another picture. Okay? All right, image storage. What do you do with all this stuff? You don't store them only on your computer, although that's a good place, but you don't. What happens if your computer crashes? I've lost a lifetime's worth of work. <coughs> yeah. Storage media. I read some pictures, take up storage space. You know, if you've got a book that's this thick and a book that's this thick, it's going to take up more room on a shelf. But I'll, okay? Media must be kept up to date. Oh, what that mean? Well, when I first started taking digital photos, we saved them on floppy disks. 
And then we save them on zip disks. <laughs> and then we save them on jump drive or dip disk or another another kind of there was one other permutation in there. And then we save them on DVDs. And <coughs> if you notice that this technology does not talk to that technology. This technology, you know, the, only the adjacent technologies will talk to each other. So all of a sudden, you could have a jillion floppy disks, you're gonna have to go to the antique store and buy a computer to read it. <laughs> so you gotta you gotta keep up. All right, now this is DVDs, CDs. Here's the latest permutation. Anybody know what the latest permutation for storing digital images is? Hard drives. External hard drives. Okay. And it has it. The external hard drive has gotten bigger. I've not seen the next evolution of technology. Hopefully, it, so the current recommendation is an external hard drive. Something you buy at Best Buy, it comes to your computer and it comes in terabytes or gigabytes or whatever, and you store it on your computer and on this. We got in two places. I actually have mine in three places, right? Okay? Something you have to think about. You can store them on CDs, but CDs are not archival unless you buy archival CDs. You can buy a CD for what, 50 cents a piece? You can buy an archival CD for 19.95, which means it lasts, you know, a CD lasts a couple years and three years and then a degree. You ever gone to a video store and bought a CD that's been played for 10 times? Not so good. All right. So what is a megapixel? <laughs> The capacity of your camera sensor to recover just your detail. More pixels, more detail. More pixels, more money. Yeah, right? Okay. All right. Your, your, your computer screen or your web rep? No. No. Computer screen resolution is 72 dots per inch. That's what the web shows. You ever try to pull something off the web? You get this big pixelated because it's 72 DPI, which is very, very dots per inch, which is very low. The print, snapshot magazine, glossy publication, print, photo, 300 DPI. So if you're taking low resolution JPEGs in your camera, you're, you're limited to what you can do. Right? So that's why you don't do it. Right. Resizing. Save your original image file to your original image file. And ideally, it would be a high resolution JPEG or a ROM. Okay. Reduce. Yes, yeah, sure. You can reduce it all you want. Enlarge. If you enlarge a 72 DPI image, you're going to get CRAP. Okay. Unless you like mosaic tiles, because that's what it's going to look like. <laughs> Alright, so here's a duck. Reduced it. Enlarged it. All of a sudden you see the flaws in it. Okay? But it's simply exceeded its capacity to record images. Alright. So to be a photographer, you have to learn how to do lots of little things very, very well. And those are the things that are on your list. On your list. And we're going to go over them and over them, and then we're going to go out in the field and see if you can operate them. The reason we didn't go out in the field today because you weren't ready to go out in the field today. Okay? All right. So when you get an opportunity, no matter what it is or where it is, extraordinary opportunity, you want to take. You don't want to say, God, I'm sure, Miss. This is a hummingbird in flight. It's an extraordinary opportunity if you know how to accomplish it. Okay, so opportunities arise, capture that minute. That's what photography is all about. And that's what it means by going to France, you're in a riot, people are yelling in French, you need to know what they're saying. Okay, when you get opportunities out here, guarantee you that the, the opportunities at Emmaquan can be fleeting. Oh, there goes a flight of pelicans. <laughs> oh, what did I do now? I get the manual out, so I'm coming through it, and now it doesn't work. Okay. What you want, what you always, you always capture an image in optical zoom. You never compromise and do a digital zoom in the camera.
Because all the, all the camera is doing is, you, if your image site, if your sensor is this big to do a digital <coughs> zoom, it simply uses that much of the sensor to get the image bigger, which means it has that much fewer. So you can go from an 18 megapixel camera to a 10 megapixel camera by doing digital zoom. So it's like buying a $50,000 lens and sticking a Coke bottle in front of it. You, you degrade you degrade the image. You, you should always you should always take everything with an optical zoom and then do whatever you can in the computer. Don't ever do it in the camera. Wait, are you are you saying do, do not zoom? Do not use digital zoom. And if a, and if a, cam, if a camera extols the virtue of digital zoom, it's feeding you a line because it's it's degrading the image to get that digital zoom image. Okay? It's better to have a, a full frame optical zoom than that digital zoom. You can always do it in, in processing, but, but you can't ever go back once you've got a digital image, that digital zoom image in your camera. You need the optical, in other words, you need to physically you can you can buy cameras they'll say oh yeah there's a 500 millimeter digital zoom yeah so you can do that in, in photoshop without but, the problem but when your cameras are like 10 times so if it says 10x and it's digital zoom that's perfect if it says 25x optical zoom just to take everything i put <laughs> If it says 10 optical zoom, that's good. If it says 20 x digital zoom, that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's meaningless. Okay, is everybody mildly comfortable with that? Okay, that's what you need to know. That's what. You, that, those are the things you have to think about when you when you when you buy a, a camera or, or, or anything like that, or when you take a picture. Okay. Yeah. For your photography. Photographs of the uh, hummingbird and flight. Yeah. Can you describe the stuff? Okay, it was, it was the cloud forest in Ecuador. They were you know, coming to flowers and coming to feeders. And I, I have a long lens and I have a big flash and I was using that and I said, you know, this thing, this thing, I said, heck with this. I'm an entomologist. I'm going to treat it like an insect. So I put on my macro system to photograph the insects and it was a piece of cake. So it was. <coughs> the mindset. I was saying, this bird, I need to use the bird equipment. Well, I use the insect equipment. And, and what that is, it's a little more complicated than right now, but we'll get there. So that, that's like that, uh, those blue jays against the white sky, impossible. That's an impossible image for the camera to take without doing something else. And we'll tell you what that something else is later. So the how long did you take the camera to expose it? All I did with that was change the exposure. Why did you? So the exposure made longer? I opened it up and let more light in. You know, so the plus and minus, you know, we can change the add more. There's a little, my, mine had a little dial. Some people have a little weak button or something. You can let more light in and then they get, there it is. Okay. So there's, like, again, Gary, it's all about control and knowing what to do when for what. And doing it. If you're photographing flowers or rock formations or archaeological digs, it's not important. It's, they're just sitting there. Right? But if it's if it's somebody galloping across the plains with a with a spear throwing things, you have you gotta do it quickly. Okay? You gotta be able to do it quickly. Okay. All right. So that's, that's enough technical stuff for right now. We're going to do a little bit more of it later. But what I want to do now is I want to talk about the art of photography. And then next week, we're going to be ready to go outside and, and, and try some stuff. So next week, you need to bring your camera, cameras, camera equipment. And we're going to go outside and we're going to test your metal, shall we say. Give me metal. Give me the metal. Give me the DLA. All right, so all our goals in to take photographs is one to have impact on somebody, right? Check that out. That's impact. So you show, you've all shown people photographs of yourself and they're like, oh yeah, nice. 
uh, or you go to an exhibit and people go through it and then no impact. So an impact is a function of three things. Technique, if you your exposure, if it's sharp, you know, well focused, things we've just been talking about. Content. Is something people want to see? Okay. Or is it a photograph of the underside of, of Michael Lyons' car? Which could be artistic, but you know, maybe not. And composition. How did you arrange the object in the viewfinder? Okay? We talked a little bit about this, we haven't done this yet. We're gonna hop right into this. We're gonna talk about composition. Composition is very, very important. And I'm going to tell you how to evaluate your photographs, okay? And everybody else's for that matter. So, we have this pie chart, or this bullseye here. All photographs are made up of three components. Technical skills, you know how to operate your camera, and you know how to operate in a way that is consistent. And you have to take these base level skills and you have to apply them to what I'm talking about natural history subjects. These are subjects. All these base level skills have to be applied to those individual subjects. And it's not all just like with the hummingbird. I was thinking that it was a bird, well, I should you know, start thinking it was an insect, there was no problem. And then you artfully compose the images. So you got three layers, three components. So, for a perfect photo, and, and believe it or not, your goal is every photo you take is perfect. Okay? Every photo, perfect photo is not the same, but every photo you take should be perfect. It should have the right technical skills applied to this. <coughs> it should be an interesting subject, or other ones while you're taking a photo. And it should be artfully composed. All those three things are in your control. So, technically correct. Apply to an interesting subject, artistically composed. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> right? So, how do you evaluate a photograph? And we try to, you know, judging photos is a very esoteric, you know, everybody likes something different.